Oh, you do, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Inks, and I'm from IGS Electronics. Today, we're going to be continuing with our encoder challenges and fun that we've been having. And today's task is measure the length with our encoder. And again, we're going to be using a function block that Siemens has provided, created, and shared with us, which is very, very simple to use, very simple to set up, and very simple to read the values. Today, where we're going, what we're going to do, we're going to be setting that up in our TR portal set a bit of a couple of values on our HMR screen, have a look how that works, and uh, test it live as we always do. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, let's do a little bit of a small recap as we uh, did in the last couple of videos, so we all know where we are. Again, don't forget to download the file in here, which is a V14 file, convert it to whichever version you are working with, and do exactly the transfer of function blocks into your project library, and save it for later use to be able to follow me what I'm going to be doing today. So, remember guys, these function blocks are very, very good. Siemens specifically made life much easier for us so the application in here there's all write downs in here follow the manual if you wish to as well to follow it in here how to set it all up but you or you can follow me as i progress first thing we need to do is go again into our, our device configuration into our device itself and go to the high speed counter one once you go into high speed counter one so as you can see, in uh, general, I have changed my type of uh, counting. It's going to be count and operation uh, phase is going to be A and B. And we're going to be counting up. Also, if we go down to gate, we're going to need the gate basically to activate when to start measuring. So there is our gate and we have activated use external gate for input. And I have a setup as uh, active high. When it's high, start measuring. When it's low, stop measuring. So uh, that you can obviously use internal if you want to. I decided to use uh, external because quite often that is coming from external signals. So as you can go down here, now that when you go into a hardware input, you're going to be able to see, just do this, you'll be able to see that my gate now is being assigned to I0.3. So, and don't forget to set up the speeds of your inputs as we did in a few videos ago. Again, check out that in the uh, videos when we are uh, looked at and counters in the first place, how to wire the counter. So now that we've done that, we saved that. So our counter is ready to do what we're about, what are we about to do? I'm going to be performing this uh, program in cyclic interrupt. So I open a cyclic interrupt. From there on, what we're going to do, I'm going to go into my library and I'm going to go, uh, get my uh, uh, calculate length function block that's been created by Siemens. Remember guys, this is not part of default TI portal. You have to get it yourself, which I have demonstrated how to do a couple of videos ago. So put that into your uh, project. Data block is going to be created. And from there on, we need to provide some values and a data for this block. So first one, let's give it which high speed counter is it? So we are going to be saying that's going to be our high speed counter one. Having done that, the next one we need to give him the gate. So this is remember our signal, which is going to tell the uh, PLC to start measure, which is going to be called our trigger. I already prepared the flag for it, which is I0.3. From there on, as you can see down there, uh, HSC counter value value itself. For that one, remember, we did it three videos ago. The first counter address in our uh, uh, PLC is 1000, ID 1000. So as you can see in here, I already prepared the uh, tag already. And in the la one last thing that we need to do, is a as you can see in here is a length per pulse this is something that you need to work out yourself when you let's say you you move the encoder slowly and uh, uh, if we've got the wheel just may run run this distance and more or less uh, calculate out how many millimeters you have done per specific pulse for our uh, the sampling what what we're going to do we're going to say it's a one millimeter per pulse let's it's, it's just roughly obviously it's not but for us to read it out better, it's going to be one millimeter 
her pulse. Again, you can specify specific address, uh, specific data blocks here if you want to, to uh, be able to edit this in many different ways. So we are going to do very simple. We're just going to keep it there as one. Or, as I said, you can you can create a data block in here where you can put the values and edit the values later on if you wish to. For me, I'm not going to touch that. We're going to leave that as one pulse per millimeter. So having done that, another thing what we need to do, we're going to need to reset every time we have finished the, the measurement, the gate will go low and we need to reset the counter back to zero. So for that, what we're going to do, we're going to go into instructions. Go into a technology, counting, and then go in others. And as you can see in here, which is a high speed counter, which is, gives us a control. Let me just quickly read out what it may. Here we go. This instruction figures and controls the high speed counter supported by CPU. Very good, very good block. So you use it for controlling your counter. Here we go. It's going to create this data block. Boom, that's done. From there on, what we all we're going to need to do in here is tell him what a counter is it that he's going to be uh, controlling. We're going to say that's going to be our counter one. And the last thing what we need to do, we're going to need to give him, say, give him the CV value in here is what sends in the new value into the counter. As you can see, I'm, my default is going to be zero. So that's exactly what we want to do. We want to zero it. So we need to trigger it, this CV value. We are going to use F trigger so that's basically f trigger is going to be able to a uh detect the i'm going to read it out for you in a minute so let's do that oh let's do that uh, something Siemens suggests as well f underscore trigger it's a quite a uh, interesting uh block that does a pretty cool stuff so well, let's click F1. By clicking F1, it's going to explain you more or less what that block does. So with the detect negative signal edge structure, you can detect the state change from one to zero. Basically, it's going to output pulse when it's going to detect a uh, where is the saying here negative signal edge. And once it detects that, the generated a Q output is is activated for for to true for one cycle only. So that is really good for us because that's exactly what we want. So what we're going to say in here, when trigger is uh, activated, can I, I went, when trigger is activated, we'll leave it at that, uh, output, uh, this output in here, I'm going to be just doing, putting directly on here from going to go through the trigger data block because it's got data block so i'm going to say we're well, just activate a cv for one cycle and that one that one cycle is going to be enough for us to reset the counter to zero and that is pretty much all that we need to do to measure it so i haven't done that so let me load this in and we'll go from there and uh, before we do that let's go into our hmi and put that on the HMI so we can actually see it nicely. So let's go on screens. Well, let's change the address of this guy to read something else, and that's gonna be from program calculate length, and that's gonna be length per no status part length. There we go. So that is going to show us the actual length and we don't need any decimals this time that will do so yeah now let's load it in and let's have a look how that works so here we are so all loaded in and all in a uh, watch uh, watching as well as you can see at the moment if i go into the system in here there's my encoder when i spin my encoder nothing is happening because it's looking for the gate our gate is going to be activated by this wireless button in here. So to show you first in here how that will work. So if you go, we're going to click the, I'll show you that now. We're going to click the, the button in here. As you can see, the state from the agent gate has changed to true. So let's spin a little bit encoder. And as you can see, the value is going up. So it basically is counting the value. And as soon as it will receive a, a gate negative, it will reset, record the measurement, 
and uh, wait for the next uh, high gate. So again, a encoder can be spinning and nothing's happening. So let's see how that would look like in live. So gate activated. You see, it's, it's counting. This is actually counters value. As you can see, so I added another window so we can sort of measure as well. And as soon as it's negative gate in, it does its math and records that value into the output. So there we go. So let's uh, let's see what happens if we change that. As at the moment, it's quite fairly easy because once you do that, it's just millimeter to millimeter. So it does. It looks like it just does the count value. So let's change that uh, uh, value that our pulse is. It's let's change that to zero point five millimeters per pulse. Oh, we can't do that, don't we? Ah. Oh. Okay, so uh, we need, oh yeah, because we need to do that, uh, ch 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 let's go offline, let's go into here, uh, not in here, uh, in here, and change that one to 0 0.5, alright, so let's load that in, there we go, so, uh, and uh, let's go and have a look at how that looks now, so, gate on, Let's move the encoder. So let's say, let's stop roughly about 200, all right? And that should give us 100, 100 mil. And there we go. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we can calculate the length. Very, very simple, very efficient. That's what Siemens is very good at. When they create these, uh examples pay attention to their function blocks because they are very very useful other than that you would have to do quite a bit of uh, code writing to be able to achieve what they just did in that one function block and that ladies and gentlemen will do for this video hopefully this is helping you out and getting you where you're trying to get and making your life much easier definitely makes my life easier thank you very much siemens for your uh help if you are watching this video and so, for those who liked the video, do smash that like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel. I will see you in the next one.